Awesome, thank you. Sounds like you heard my name a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> apologies for, for running so late here, but we just made it on time. Excited to be here. Uh, and excited to be uh, able to kick off Platform Engineering Day at this uh, beautiful Cube KubeCon Cloud Native Con uh, event. Um, what we're doing uh, with our company Loft is essentially some really cool open source projects, including vCluster for virtual Kubernetes clusters uh, and DevPod for cloud native dev environments. Uh, you can check them out uh, on GitHub, obviously, if you're interested. And um, yeah, they're obviously uh, pretty, pretty exciting if you go to vcluster.com or devpod.sh uh, if, if you want to learn more. If you're a platform engineer, which I assume most of you are, it's exciting to see so many people here. Um, I know the, the platform engineering hype continues to grow, um, but it's excited that you all come here in person uh, exchange knowledge. Uh, obviously, I only have five minutes, so we can't get really that technical uh, today. Uh, but I just want to ask everybody, you know, if you're working in platform engineering, there's one thing that often gets overlooked. You know, a lot of us are IT professionals rather than, you know, actual hands-on application developers. But one thing is important to understand, and that's balancing setting common standards versus giving developers full autonomy. So when you, for example, hand out cluster per tenant, right, so everyone gets their own cluster, then obviously you don't have a ton of common standards. Everything can be you know, very custom. You give them a lot of autonomy, which engineers may like. But platform engineering is really all about setting common standards, finding golden paths, right? Um, so that's what we all typically try, uh, try to do. Um, so if you are opting the more stricter route in Kubernetes, which is kind of the alternative going you know, multi-tenant over single-tenant, uh, then you probably have shared clusters. You give people access to namespaces. You know, namespace per tenant is a pretty common approach. Uh, but that typically has a downside of taking a lot of autonomy away from your, from your dev teams, from your actual application-focused engineering teams. Um, and what we're helping uh, you know, folks do typically with our vCluster technology is find a middle ground. vCluster really allows you to run multi-tenant clusters that have uh, shared common standards. So you run a shared platform stack that nobody can see and nobody can touch. Because instead of handing out a namespace to a tenant or handing out an entire cluster, you're spinning up a virtual cluster. And that virtual cluster runs in a regular namespace as a container, right? So there's a pod running that's essentially an entire Kubernetes cluster packed in a pod. And that means you can hand out a cluster to a tenant. But because it's not a fully separate cluster, it is a cluster that runs inside another cluster, it can actually rely on the common uh, you know, tools that you run in the underlying cluster. So if you're running Istio in the underlying cluster, or Cert Manager, or an Ingress Controller, or OPA, you can share these tools across your fleet of virtual clusters. That means you have that you know, you know, common standard approach, but on the other side, you also have like, the full autonomy for engineers inside. If you're spinning up a vCluster, it essentially means you're not giving out a cluster per tenant. You're giving out a control plane per tenant, and that control plane runs in a pod. That means they have full cluster access inside the virtual cluster, but no access outside, other than obviously using the shared tools that you make available to them. Um, you can see here on the right-hand side, you can spin up a vCluster pretty easily. It's a you know, fully compliant Kubernetes cluster. It's a certified Kubernetes distro. Um, and it also has some security best practices and isolation best practices baked in. So with just a couple of lines of YAML in the vCluster YAML, that's our typical you know, standard format to define a vCluster, you can enable network policies, resource quotas, et cetera to make a vCluster a little bit more isolated um, than obviously if you were not enabling these things. You can spin up a vCluster via CLI. Um, as you can see here in this command, vCluster create, just provide the vCluster YAML. Um, under the hood, that's really just values for Helm chart. So you can also deploy vCluster via Helm, via Argo, via Terraform, you name it. Obviously, this was pretty high level. If you want to learn more, here's a QR code uh, to a talk I gave at KCD Washington just a couple months ago. Um, feel free to scan that and check out the talk on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, before we move on, uh, please also meet us uh, at you know, the main conference uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we got some pretty cool swag uh, at the booth. Um, we usually have some nice highlights, obviously great conversations. Uh, we have three additional talks throughout the conference um, that I'm inviting you to check out. And one really exciting thing I do want to promote here as well before I wrap up in the last 10 seconds that are remaining here. Um, we also have three book signings. 
Uh, so feel free to uh, snap, a uh, um, snap a photo of this. Um, especially the one on the right-hand side, Platform Engineering on Kubernetes by Mauricio, really great book. If you want a signed copy, come by uh, 12 p.m., so around lunchtime uh, on Thursday. And if you want to chat some more about vCluster and platform engineering in general, we also have a little bit of a tabletop booth uh, outside over here. Enjoy the rest of the day, and let's kick off Platform Engineering Day. Thank you.